and welcome back to the 31 days of Samhain. We are here for episode 3 which is Autumn's Kiss and if you are new here thank you so much for clicking on this video and spending some of your day with me today. Leave a like on the video if you loved it and don't forget to subscribe as I post new videos every week. For this episode, we wanted to dive on in a little bit more to the season of autumn and discover the magic behind this wonderful season that we call fall. 31 Days of Samhain is the series made by hatchlings for hatchlings for us to learn, grow, and discover more about the season and Samhain together. For each day that we cover for this episode, there will be a blog post linked down below in the description made by a hatchling for all of you hatchlings out there to learn, explore, and discover a little bit more about each topic we cover this week. With that being said, let us fall on into Autumn's Kiss. For day 15 of 31 Days of Samhain, we will be discussing autumn leaf symbolism and the magic behind autumn leaves. We have a special guest here, Miss Magic Girl, bringing us a little bit of information on the magical mystical symbolism behind autumn leaves. So to learn a little bit more, marry me and welcome Miss Magic Girl. Hi, this is Magic from Miss Magic Girl TV and I am here to talk a little bit about autumn leaves and how you can use them in your magical practice during this time of the year and their symbolism and so on. Autumn leaves are a great symbol for the cycle of life and death. In the spring they are beautiful and green and filled with life and then in the autumn they fall to the ground and they become one with the earth and so therefore they really represent the cycle of seasons and of nature and of life and death. Trees symbolize beauty and wisdom and strength and wealth and protection and the trees shedding their leaves during autumn is a symbol for leaving old things behind, uh, things that used to be very active and really alive but no longer serve you and that they are sort of weighing you down. You can leave those things behind during this time of year and autumn leaves are a perfect symbol for that process. I think a big part of being a witch is being in tune with nature and you can kind of use nature and the processes and the seasons changing and everything that goes on around us and the energies that are at play in nature as a guide in your own spiritual journey. Going out in nature if you have the possibility, meditating on this season, the energies around you, using autumn leaves in your spell work and in your meditations can be a powerful way of connecting to the energies that are at play right now. One example of using autumn leaves in your spell work can be to write down the things that you want to leave in the past on autumn leaves themselves and then let them do what they are meant to do, become one with the earth again while you can move on and you can feel like those things that you are leaving behind can now transform and give energy to the new things that you are going to be doing and uh, for your future journey. So that was a little bit about autumn leaves and the symbolism of them and how you can use them in your practice. If you want to learn more there is more information in my blog post and uh, with that said, I just want to wish you happy Samhain. Thank you so much, Miss Magic Girl, for giving us a little bit more information on the magic and symbolism of autumn leaves. For day number 16 of 31 Days of Samhain, we're going to take a little bit of an interesting turn here. Our guest is Fire Queen, and she is going to be covering celebrating Samhain for Christians and Catholics and people who may not identify as a witch. Many of us do have family members that are Christians, that are Catholics, and that maybe follow more mainstream religions that isn't really witchy friendly perhaps. Maybe some of you guys out there want to actually incorporate your Christian, Catholic, and other sorts of beliefs that may be not so witchy friendly, but you want to incorporate them into your witchcraft practices. It's very common in today's society that we don't really want to mix Christianity and witchcraft together. A lot of people say that it is wrong on one way or the other, it doesn't work, and we're here to tell you that no one can tell you what you can and cannot do with your 
religious, spiritual, and magical practices. Again, this is entirely up to you, and many of us do come from these Christian, Catholic type of backgrounds, and so we really want to provide a challenge for you guys to incorporate those together and to merge those two wonderful worlds together in case it might be a little bit of a tricky subject, not only in your household, but something that you want to discover as well. To learn a little bit more about how to celebrate Samhain as a Christian or Catholic and to discover how you truly feel about merging the two practices, don't forget to check out Fire Queen's post linked down below within the Hatchling Clan that will cover all that you need to know about merging these two practices together. So we are going to learn some fun little things that we can create during this time of year to really get in touch with the season of autumn and celebrate the wonderful season that is fall, oh yes! For this day we will be working on autumn arts and witchcrafts and this is brought to you by a bunch of hatchlings. We have worked together to showcase and discuss some of our favorite autumn themed crafts. Now, I'm going to be showing you in this video how to make a mini altar besom using a dried rose and some dried pine needles as well as some uh, like crafting thread. You use this to like make uh, friendship bracelets for example. Uh, this is just how I make my besoms. There's plenty of ways to make your own, but I will also be showing you guys how to make a little protection jar, but this isn't even close to all the crafts that you could be doing during this time of year. You can be pumpkin carving, you can make your own runes, you can make your own tarot cards, you can make your own candles, your own scrying mirror, your own scrying bowl. You can really go ahead and make whatever you want, even books as you can see my handmade book in the background. For this besom, pretty much the basics is to find a a twig or a rose in this case like dried so it is no moisture inside that's very important or it can mold and then find some dried pine needles that have fallen this is really easy to find during the fall time so collect as many as you can and bundle them up to where they look about the same size and at the top they're pretty much at the same level and then just wrap with any color string that you want you could even wrap with wire i've done this you could add charms you could paint the pine needles you can paint the rose stem you can paint the stem or the twig that you're using. Uh, literally, your imagination is the only limitation in this situation. All you've got to do is follow your heart and make it however you want. And once you have wrapped all the cord around, simply tie it in a knot and cut off the excess. This mini altar besom is intended to cleanse your working space, your altar, your shrine, your ritual space, whatever that may be. And since it's mini, it is intended for tabletop spaces. However, you can make a full-sized besom to cleanse your hearth and home. One of the most iconic tools in a witch's kit, this besom is intended for cleansing your space. And most of the materials, since they are provided by Mother Nature herself, this craft is very affordable and usually free 99. If you do not have the little cord that I'm cutting here, you can either purchase it at your local craft store or you could even use a vine to make the besom entirely earth made. So that's just a really fun tool that you can use. And and if you would like to purchase this besom from my Etsy store, Dragon Fairy Crafts, the link will be down below for you if you are interested in taking this little lovely home. So next we have a protection charm jar, and this is to give you all those protection vibes during this time of year. First, we're adding some black sand because black sand is great for protection. You can also use black salt. Now I'm adding my protection herb blend, which includes sage, basil, rosemary as well as lavender and mugwort just to add some more protective qualities to this charm jar next we'll be adding a little dragon's blood incense bead which is red and super cute and next we'll be adding onyx crystal chips tiger's eye crystal chips amethyst crystal chips and garnet crystal chips and you are more than welcome to buy this little charm jar from my etsy store as well if you'd like to learn how to make some more autumn themed crafts and some other things that hatchlings have shared with us don't forget to check the post linked down below that has been made by us hatchlings so yeah if you want to buy the besom or this charm jar you're more than welcome to the link will be down below for you and we hope that you enjoy these spooky little crafts 
2018 brought to you by Storm Raven. We're covering the autumn music playlist and we wanted to kind of shine some light on music for this time of year as listening to autumn themed music for this time of year can really help us get into a magical mystical witchy vibe. Many of us I'm sure feel our most magically powerful during this time of year on autumn and so we wanted to provide some different types of music for you to explore and enjoy within your craft, your practice, and even in your rituals. If you'd like to learn more about this music and see some of the stuff that we've provided for you, don't forget to check out Storm Raven's post linked down below and it'll include some awesome autumn themed music for you to enjoy during this time of year. Remember you can always create your own music and we highly encourage you to do so within your practice as spirits, deities, a especially all of the wonderful spirits around during this time, really appreciate being offered dance and song. So please enjoy that and please create your own and share your own within the Hatchling Clan. And if you want to learn more and even try a challenge, don't forget to check out Storm Raven's blog post, link down below, all for the autumn music for this time of year. Moving on to day 19, we have Autumn Correspondences covered by Raven Shadow Wing, and we are going to kind of identify the different types of correspondences during this time. For example, we will be exploring and discussing colors, crystals, herbs, trees, all these different kinds of things for you to get in touch with what really represents autumn time for you. And this is something that is really important to explore, especially if you want to practice more during this time or if you feel more magical during this time. It's important to identify the correspondences for each season, especially autumn during this time of year, as it's really gonna help you understand and connect better to the season and to the world around you. Correspondences are really important for a witch in their craft because when you are practicing, uh, especially if you're practicing seasonal magic, you want to learn what really resonates with you for this time of year because that's going to help you better explore and understand your personal craft and your personal style within your magic because no two witches are the same, that's for sure. Just like our correspondences aren't going to be the same, so it's important for you to explore what you relate as correspondences during this time of year because you never know what you could connect with the most and something that you may connect with as a correspondence, others may not. If you want to learn more and try the challenge on exploring your own personal autumn correspondences, please click down below to Raven Shadow Wing's blog post all about the magic of autumn correspondences. So for day 20 and our 31 days of Samhain, we wanted to discuss autumn apparel and I covered this one as fashion, especially during this time of year, is such a big deal for me personally. The color scheme of autumn is one of my favorites to dress in and one of my favorites to create with because it's just such a beautiful color scheme and one that really inspires me, especially with my magic. So for autumn apparel, we really wanted you guys to dive in on how to explore the season and magic of autumn through your clothing, through your makeup, through your fashion and style. And honestly, just to kind of like explore and express yourself. It's always fun to try something new, especially if it's something that you've never done before. Also have some wonderful looks to share with you for this topic. So I hope you enjoy the little mini autumn witch lookbook for you. enjoyed that wonderful little lookbook for autumn apparel and if you want to learn more about 
the breakdown of each outfit and the magical symbolism behind it, as well as a challenge for you to try your own autumn apparel this year, please click my post that I made within the Hatchling Clan linked down below for you, and it will cover everything you need to know about exploring your autumn witchy fashion. Lastly, for day 21 brought to you by Lulu, we are exploring autumn and Samhain recipes. I know for many of us, the food is the greatest and the grandest during this time of year, but let me tell you that this is one of the greatest times to make some of the most homiest, cozy, and delicious treats for you. Autumn is honestly one of the best seasons, in my opinion, for making food and for enjoying food with friends and family. During this time of year, there are wonderful treats for you to try, and Lulu has provided a blog for us that includes some recipes to different wonderful autumn and Samhain themed recipes that you can try to incorporate in your ritual for Samhain this year, to share with your friends and family, and also to create just to get into the festive mood of autumn. Nothing quite tastes like autumn, and I think we can all agree that pumpkin spice and cinnamon and nutmeg and ginger and all of these wonderful herbs and spices are great flavors as well as certain pies like pumpkin pie and apple pie and pecan pie are some great pies and there's just so much more that you can try and pumpkin bread and just mmm I just love the food okay guys so don't forget to try one of the recipes made by Lulu linked down below I'm sure that you will definitely enjoy them and they are quite easy to vegan as well if you would like to make them vegan friendly. So I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Like I said, every single day that we cover today has a corresponding blog post that goes more in depth, including a challenge for you to try for this season. Please go support the fellow hatchlings that made this series possible. I could not have done it without them. And thank you guys so much for watching. I also wanted to give a special thank you to the sponsors of the channel and my craft, Lagatha Scarlet and Royland Devaro. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, and if you are interested in becoming a sponsor for the channel, please click the link down below or at the end of the video to my Patreon page where it covers all the different exclusive content that I offer, not on any other platform here on the internet. So if that's something you are interested in, the link will be there for you. But thank you so much for joining us today in Autumn's Kiss. I hope you guys are feeling wonderfully festive with how beautiful this autumn season is. And I hope that this Autumn's Kiss brings you some magic for the season. Much love to you guys always, but until next time, stay geeky cheeky and freaky little hatchlings but until next time blessed be and bye